Stepping out. Thank you, Linda. Great job on that song. And that's exactly what we should be doing, stepping out of our closet of security and begin to share what God has done in our lives. Amen. We want to welcome uh, Ty and Deborah. God bless you for being here with us today. They were with us at Sunday School, and uh, we're glad you're with us again. Well, it's good to see everyone, and so we're going to dismiss the young people to go with their prospective teachers and have a good time there. And... Uh, going to be a lot of fun. I heard we got some special events coming up for Mother's Day. Um, I heard we got sights to be behold on Mother's Day. Isn't that right, Sister Ann? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we got Mother's Day is just a couple of weeks away, and so uh, there is a, a need for us to remember the ones in whose knees we sat upon, and uh, you got to just to be thankful. Uh, is you know uh, as a young person and, uh, and as a minister I've always heard the saying it's upon the mother's knee that uh, a, a child first hears about Jesus yes. Amen. it seems like the mom seems to be a little more tender hearted uh, about the spiritual things and so uh, remember mom alright how many are glad now we're in chapter 2 of James <laughs> I'll tell you you guys are in for it now we're going to have to just take the rest of the year for the book of James. No, I'm just kidding. Let's see if we can find it. Yeah. <laughs> you should be well worn. You're going to James. Well, we did finish chapter 1 last week, and we kind of summarized the last few 10 or so verses of, of that uh, uh, chapter, of James chapter 1. And uh, we, one of the things that we're going to look at today that will be predominant is um, what the scripture says concerning uh, if, if you jump back up to verse 27 of chapter 1 it says pure, relig pure and undefiled religion before God and the father is this to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world and what we're going to do today we're going to look at a theme that's found in chapter 2 that uh, about being a, beware of showing partiality and um, because that's going to hinder our walk if we begin to get ourselves clicked up you know a little group here a little group there we're one body in Christ yeah. we're one people uh, no one is better than the other we all have to come and kneel at the cross of Christ. We all have to bow our knee. We all have to confess with our mouths and believe in our heart that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. And the Bible says that by that we are saved. And so uh, this, this scripture that we're going to look at today, the first 13 or so verses uh, of this chapter will give us some insight. So let's take time to read just for a few moments. Uh, James chapter 2 verse 1 it says my brethren do not hold the faith of our Lord Jesus the Lord of glory with partiality for if there should come into your assembly a man with gold rings fine, in fine apparel there should also, and there should also come in a man in a poor man in filthy clothes and you pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes and say to him you sit here in a good place and say to the poor man, you sit over there or sit here at my footstool. Have you not shown partiality among yourselves and become judges of evil thoughts, with evil thoughts? Listen, my brother, beloved brethren, has not God chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor man. Do not the rich oppress you and drag you into the courts? Do they not blaspheme the noble name by which you are called? If you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You do well. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but you do, not, but you do murder, you have committed, you became a transgressor of the law. So speak and do as those who will be judged by the law of liberty. 
For judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgments. Father, we ask God that you will just give us the strength, the wisdom, the knowledge and understanding of your scripture today. Lord, we want to continue to grow and become more like you. We want to be able to be a body that is unified and solidified by the power of the Holy Spirit. So give us the insight, the knowledge, and understanding that we need today in your word, in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, If I was going to pull out two verses or a text there, it would be verses 8 and 9, fulfilling the royal law. Um, And uh, that's something that will be a characteristic of our whole life as believers, is to do what the Lord says for us to do in His Word. Uh, I know we have a a lot of groups out there and individuals that we may have uh, ideas about and judgments against, and maybe rightly so. But when people are seeking for the wisdom and knowledge of God, it is important for us to have an understanding ear and a compassionate heart because we don't want no one to be held without responsibility to or an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ. Amen. The people that that we might come across sometimes will be rejecting of the gospel. But does that mean we sh- shrug them off? No. no. Uh, it means that we pray a little harder and the opportunity that comes we try we try again. Um, it's like uh, uh, it's like planting seed. You know, sometimes uh, the first, if you only plant one seed, it may not grow very quickly. It may not grow at all. How I many had that happen? <laughs> well, I wish I <coughs> I wish I was as successful as RB back there. At least he's got a garden going. I don't have nothing going yet. <laughs> but I planted seed in the ground and nothing comes up. But the more seed I plant, the better the opportunity, or the greater the opportunity comes. And no one is to be despising of any one individual that comes into our life or across our path because that could be an opportunity for God to touch their life through you to bring them to that great saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. We don't know who the next great world evangelist would be or the great, great mighty witness that will take place. It could be somebody we don't even know. But if we have an open heart to receive people and present the gospel of Jesus Christ, then there's an opportunity for God to work. My Jesus. God to do something. Yeah. Yeah. You know, even Paul said in, his, in the scripture, he says that some water, some plant, some water, some harvest. You know, some are going to be casting out the seed, planting the seed. Some are going to come right behind and water and, and strengthen and encourage. Some are going to come in along and, and weed out certain things but then there will be those who come in with the right timing right place right words and God brings in a wonderful harvest and that could be you in any one of those positions so I want us to keep uh, in an idea in our spirit that that God is is wanting that that no one should perish but all come to repentance that's the heart of God we can't save church can't save but God can you know that's the that's the important thing. Mm-hmm. Don't be too quiet on me today, please. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I want us to look at verses nine and uh, eight and nine again. If you really fulfill the royal law con- according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as oneself. And you know we can be like the scribe in Luke's gospel. Well, who then is my neighbor? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. Well, then he gives the parable. You know the parable. The, the, the thief, uh, the, the man goes down from Jericho to Jerusalem. He, fell, he falls among thieves and robbers. He's beaten up. He's thrown off to the side. And um, none, uh, he's just there to die. Long comes a Levi. He sees him from a distance and says, there's trouble ahead. And he walks on the other way. Then you have the priest, the more religious person, who goes right up to the individual who's laying there beaten, broken, battered, dying, looks him right in the face and says, can't touch him. I'll defile myself. And walks on by. And then you have a Samaritan who is considered an outcast in the eyes of a Jew, a half-breed, and he goes up to him. Bible says, 
takes the bandages out, takes the oil out, binds up his wounds, cares for him, takes him to a hotel and says, whatever he has need of, you take care of it. When I come back in a few days, I'll pay for it. That's right. yeah. And then Jesus says, then who is the neighbor uh -huh. to that scribe? And he says, the one who showed mercy. And, and that is part of our life that we have to understand that we are to be people of mercy and compassion. Jesus said in Matthew 7, Judge not lest you be judged. For with the same judgment you and I give out, you will be judged. So we have to be really careful in our interactions with people. Do we have to agree with everybody? No. But we have to be representations of Christ everywhere we go. Uh, that's that's really the the issue for James to cause a. Remember what I said, the whole this whole book is to get us to be mature. Is it not true? Amen. Isn't that what it says? <laughs> you know. Yeah. So I know I I can feel it in my spirit. Boy, I tell you, this is going to be a good day. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yes. Yes, All right. Golden rule: Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. How many love yourself? Oh, man, that's pathetic. Everybody should be raising their hand. Everybody should. I love who I am. I love myself. You know, you would take care of yourself, would you not? If you hurt yourself, wouldn't you bind yourself up? If someone was going to come in against to attack you, wouldn't you defend yourself? Because you... Want you, you care about yourself. Yeah. Well, to love thy neighbor as thyself. That's right. So when we see opportunity to demonstrate Christ, that is something that we have to remember. We belong to Christ. Uh, maybe that's something we should always remind ourselves. You are, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You've been bought with a, the precious blood of Christ. You are not your own. Therefore, our action, our thought, our life is not what we think or what we consider to be right. It's what he thinks and what he considers to be right. Amen. And that is going to be the underlying motivation of how we live as a, as a believer. And in chapter 2 here, verses 1 through 13, he's giving us an example that, you know, there are people that might come in and say, well, you know, hey, maybe you should step outside. And that's happened. I mean, I think there are some uh, there are some opportunities where we should, well, that are totally inebriated people. They should probably not be in the sanctuary. I mean, I, that's how I think. I agree. Yeah. But an unbeliever who comes in, someone who may not look or dress like us, and yet has a heart that is yearning for the things of God, yes. we should not treat them any different than someone who has fine apparel, or has a fancy car, or someone we think we know right. and show a difference. Yes. You know, that, that's, that, that's something that we need to avoid uh, is not right. to show the difference because the golden rule applies to everyone who believes. And if we believe that Jesus Christ is our Savior and Lord, then when he speaks the word it says, you shall love your neighbor as yourself, that is not an option for any one of us. We call that a command. That's right. Yeah. And we looked at that last week about commands. We, we, we belong to him and therefore we are to do exactly as he says. Matthew seven twelve says, Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, also do to them. Yeah. For this is the law and the prophets. Mm -hmm. Talking of that, do as unto others as they would have them do unto you. I don't know about you. I don't think I would want to go up and pick a fight with this young man here and hit on him and have him come around and hit on me. He's bigger than I am. He's probably a little faster and stronger. I think I would probably begin to lose. If I, you know, what I'm saying is if we do certain things to certain people, then the result is going to come back to us the same way. That's right. This is what we're, we're trying to understand what the scripture says. Do unto others as they would have. You know, if you want others to beat up on you, beat up on other people. Yeah. I mean, if you like being hit, just keep hitting other people. You like being walked on, just walk on over people. I mean, that's, 
See what I'm saying? It's it, what what you dish out is what's going to come back to you. Amen. And, and we we, need, we really need to be giving out good things, saying good things, doing good things, as as God speaking to us and through us to them. You know, one thing that helped the early church do so well that we've lost is that the early church was a church that believed every word that Jesus spoke. And they fulfilled every commandment that he gave. Today's church looks at the word, they can take it or leave it. And that's not how it's supposed to be. We're to take the word of God and say to it, that's what Jesus says wants me to do. This is what he has declared. There's another scripture found in Luke chapter 6, verse 31. He says, just as you want men to do to you, you also do it to them likewise. Saying, 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 it's saying the same thing. What we sow, we reap. Yes, we do. Right. Galatians 6, 7. That's what a man sows, that shall he also reap. I think the greatest desire of any pastor, and, and particularly any Christian, is that men and women will come to the full knowledge of Jesus Christ. Whether in a church setting or a Bible study or one-on-one, the principle is the same, is that we grow in Jesus Christ. Amen. Does everyone know all the answers? No. no. But we know one who does all the answers. And so we go to him, we come to him for that direction, for that discernment, for that wisdom on how to deal with situations, peoples. And, 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 and so we ask God to help us. When you look at the golden rule and you look at what it says here in James... This is the foundation of true religion. Now, religion is man's search for God. That's what it is. Man is searching everywhere. That's what religion is. But we're not talking about a religion. We mentioned this last week. We're talking about a lifestyle that God has enabled us to live. So our lifestyle is not based on the concepts of man. It's based on a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. And because of that relationship, we are going to act and become even as he is. And then what Paul said in Romans chapter 8, be ye conformed into the image of Christ. That he, right. you know, we're, not, we're being transformed from ourselves into his image. This is our, one of our foundations that we need to build on. And this helps us to continue to honor God through everything that we do and say. Um, we are to take the word of God and we're to worship our Lord. This is part of our Foundation, You know, uh, study to show yourself approved. A workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing, knowing the word of God. Goes on to say, be ready to give every man an answer for the hope and faith that's within you. How many of us can do that today? Because we need to be students of the word. Yes. Applying every aspect of what God's word says. And we also need to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. We need to put it all together. It's, oh, some people just want to praise and worship all the time, but they don't want to hear the word. No. <laughs> and then we get other people that are all so caught up in the word, which is good, but then the point they become legalistic to the point where they say, well, no, that's not right, that's not right, and yet they become judges. Right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> There's a balance that we need to be in. That's right. We need to have a balance in the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I come that you might have life and that life more abundantly. And so the life that we need to have is a balanced life in him. Worship of God through his word and by deed is important. Someone said actions speak louder than words. But sticks and stones may break my bones but words will never hurt me. And that's a false statement. Amen. You can heal very quickly from sticks and stones. But when someone has batted you with words, Say that, Pastor. Say that. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's right. really it hard to heal. Right. It hurts. Mm -hmm. yes. The Bible says in Proverbs that an offended brother is harder to 
win back than a fortified city. Be careful, little mouth. What you say? I mean, you know, really, we got to be careful. Little feet where you go, hands what you do, eyes what you see, ears what you hear. I mean, we can put the whole thing together. We just need to be careful in every aspect. Micah chapter 6, verse 8 says, He has shown you, O man, what is good. Yeah, God has shown us what is good. Hallelujah. You don't have to go to the, the church down the street or you don't have to go to the seminary or theological place. You can go right to God's Word and God's Word will show you what you need to do that is good. He said, I, has he, he has shown you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? <laughs> Explanation mark or question? <laughs> What does the Lord require of you? That you do justly. Yeah. And to do justly means that you do what is fair and honest and right. Mm -hmm. And that demonstrates a righteous life. Because you're not trying to please or flatter the individual. You're trying to just honor God by what is right. When you and I have to make decisions every day when we converse with people or circumstances and how we deal with those individuals or how we deal with those circumstances depends where your heart is you can be crooked and not tell the truth or act righteously you can do something under cover so to speak that's not right do what's right Oh, but people may get offended. I had rather have people offended at me for doing what's right in order that my God may be glorified and pleased. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You got you and I have to get to the place we shouldn't worry about what people think about the righteousness that we need to live in. <coughs> we just need to live in acceptance of what God's word says. Who are you going to stand before in eternity? The Lord. You know where Tom's going to stand? Before the Lord. You know where every priest and pope, every preacher that's ever walked and lived on this earth is going to stand? Yeah. Before the Lord. Why are you fearing man? Why are you fearing the individual? Even the psalmist wrote, What can man do to me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> When God's going to take care of you, when God's going to take you from birth to death, and you stand before Him when it's all said and done, what are you worried about what your neighbor thinks? What are you worried about what so-and-so thinks? What does God think? Love your neighbor as yourself and fulfill the law. Fulfill the promise of God's Word. Do justly, I like the Latin next part of this, to love mercy. When I was growing up and had to go to the principal's office, I wish I had mercy. <laughs> but I did something I shouldn't have done and I got the consequences <laughs> for my action. The Bible says this, he who covers his sins will find no mercy. But he who confesses or acknowledges yeah. his wrong will find mercy. So today we have opportunity all throughout this day to spend before the Lord. He already knows everything that's going on in our life. You know, he knows already the thoughts. He knows the intents, the motivations. He knows what words you've already spoke. He knows what thoughts you've already thought. How do they line up with God's word? How do they line up with pleasing him in action, word, and deed? Um, I want mercy. I really want mercy. Because Tom is a very wicked person without God. So are you. <laughs> At least I'm on enough to raise my hand. I mean, uh, we're all wicked people without God. Without the Lord in working in our life. Oh, to love mercy, to walk humbly. And this, is, this is the hard part for the church in, the, in America. Is to walk humbly. 
We're the richest nation in the world. We have the biggest, brightest, glorious, elaborate churches. And yet, we are a very godless nation. That we're so proud of what we've accomplished. We're so proud of what we attain to. We've been so proud of what God has provided for us. And we are not afraid to boast and to share. Not the wealth, but the knowledge of, look what God has done for me. You know, that's where we need to understand that the pride comes for what? A great fall? Keep talking about yourself. Keep bragging. And my wife has this old saying that the brag tail loses its t- uh, the brag dog loses its tail. Yeah. My uh, there was a gentleman that came into her office selling insurance the other day, and she says she sat there for 15, 20 minutes, and all he did is talk about how good he was. And then he says, "You want to renew your policy because I've been so good." And she told him that little first statement, you know the. The, the, dog, the brag dog always loses his tail. Guess what? They may be going to another insurance company. <laughs> yeah. Just we'll let you know if you brag too much about yourself, and don't, you can lose some things. Walk humbly before God. Yeah. Don't take God for granted. And that's what a lot of people do. We take God for granted. We just we're so stuck on ourselves that we forget that it's God who provides. We forget that it's God who heals. It is God who cares for us. How many times did God save you from an accident this week? My Lord. Yeah. My Lord. Yeah. From disaster, from destruction. How many times you had a close call that you didn't even know about but it was God taking care of you? And yet we're so proud we said, well look what I did. I mean I was able to get out of the way. Well, if God hadn't pushed your arm to turn the wheel, you would have never made it. Walk humbly before our God. Turn with me to Mark chapter 12. Mark 12. And let's look at verse 33 for a moment. And then we'll go back to Hebrews 13, verse 6. But let's look at Mark chapter 12, verse 33. And to love him with all your heart. This is, this is going back to what's being said about this, uh, what we do to find God. And this is what this young rich ruler was saying. He said, and to love God with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself more than the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And Jesus said, because of the answer, he says, you are not far from the kingdom of God. He's saying right things. And not being, people are so close to the reality of the kingdom of God in their life, but words are not going to take you where you need to be. There needs to be a little footwork along with that. So you've got to begin, begin to show yourself as one individual who has actually practiced this. To love God with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your soul. And then, he goes on to say, and and with the strength, and to love your neighbor as oneself. This is better than giving up offerings. That's what God wants to put action. You know, what we're really doing in chapter 2 is preparing us for what 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 are going to do. Faith without works is dead. Now, if we are going to be Christians, we have to practice what it means to be a Christian. How to live as a Christian. How to obey God's Word as a Christian. Uh, it's, it, it's going to be a, a something we're going to have to develop. And it can I tell you something? It is a continual journey upward. You're not going to learn it all one day. You're not going to learn it all by one experience. But every day will be a learning experience. Turn to Hebrews chapter 13, verse 6. Hebrews 13, verse 6. Here's what it says. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. 
For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Boy, I'm so glad he's going to be walking with us in this. But let your conduct, let your conduct, your conduct is lifestyle. Let your life be one that honors God. And don't be wanting more than what you need. Be content with what you have. You know what partiality is? We read it already. What is it? Sin. Sin. To show partiality is a sin. I didn't say it. That's what God's Word said. We just read it. Turn back over to James chapter 2. It says it there in verse 9. But if you show partiality, you commit sin. What does sin do? Separates you from God. Hinders your relationship. Lord, help us to not be a church or an individual that will always turn our back on someone just because this or that. But we should be able to face that individual or individuals and with God's help and grace share His love, compassion, to that individual. Now remember, this is to the church body. And apparently they were having some real big problems in the church body. They weren't loving one another as Christ loved them. They were talking about one another. And we'll talk about that too. The tongue's coming up as well. They were criticizing one another. They were we're putting other people down. Because they, again, going to back to the comparison that he gave, he says, because they're poorer than you, you look down on them. And because they're more affluent, you look up to them and you want them to have the best seats. In American church, you know where the best seats are? Back row. Back row. Right. <laughs> In this day and age, front row was the best seats. Because that's where you can be seen. Ah, oh, wait a minute. People sat in the front row so they could be seen. This is where that pride comes in. No offense, Tanya. But Tanya has always sat on the front row since I've known her. That's right. She belongs there. We all have our spot, I'm don't we? I'm the example. The example. <laughs> but we're not to, to look at the individual in any way different than how Christ looks at them. Christ sees every individual that's in his body as his own. To criticize or to belittle somebody in the body of Christ is like taking a needle and sticking your arm with it. Amen. Because the person in this pew or this chair that's next to you, behind you, front of you, side of you, they're part of the body. <coughs> they're related to you in Christ. And so if you're jabbing, you're hurting everybody in this body. We all feel the effects of it. And so we, need, we really need to be attended to that not to show partiality in doing good or word or deed because it's sin it's sin to show partiality Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 17 says you shall not show partiality in judgment don't give a favor over to someone else who well if I'm a little lenient to this person because they, they give so much money to the church or whatever this person doesn't give a whole lot of money I'll be harder on them that's partiality. Uh, Job chapter 13 verse 10 says, He will surely rebuke you. Mm-hmm. Talking of God. This is what the Job is saying about God. God will surely rebuke you if you show partiality, yeah. partiality secretly. Mm-hmm. Secretly. That means you've got them 
you go behind the, the corner, so to speak, and you show partiality. Or, let's go a little deep further. The secret places of your heart that you show partiality. I know some of you say, move on, Tom. <laughs> I, I, I remember lots of occasions growing up as in a church in a situation where it was so easy to criticize somebody. Yeah. And I have said things and maybe have done some things. Man, I wish I've never said or did yeah. to someone in the body. Mm-hmm. Because I thought it was my place, my right. And it was not. Mm-hmm. There's only one judge and that's the Lord himself. You got to remember where we all were. We were all in sin. We were all in darkness. But he who saved us and redeemed us has called us out of our darkness into his marvelous, into his marvelous light. light. Isn't that great? So we all came from the same place. <laughs> so why are you fighting among yourselves? I don't know why I'm saying that. It just comes out. Malachi 2.9 Maybe there's a reason for it today. Malachi chapter 2 verse 9 The scripture is going to give us some real insight here. Therefore I also have this is Malachi chapter 2 verse 9 have made you contemptible and base before all people because you have not kept my ways but you have shown partiality you have shown partiality therefore God says because of your attitude I am going to put you down and in 1 Timothy 5 21 the Apostle Paul picks up a similar theme And it says this in the scripture. I charge you before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elected angels that you observe these things without prejudice, doing nothing with partiality. What a charge. You know, Paul says, hey, this is what God says. This is what his word declares. So what we need to do is know what sin is biblically. Real quickly, in Proverbs ten nineteen, vain talking. That means talking that makes no sense. Talking that hurts. Talking that's foolish is sin. Remember what words do. Can I? Could you catch that for me, Nathan? Just catch that word for me. Can't do it. Man, when the word goes out. You can grasp all you want, and it's already done its damage. And so, that is in contempt for others, found in Proverbs fourteen twenty one, is also part of that biblical definition of sin. Contempt. That means you're holding your nose up. Oh, I wish so and so wasn't here today. And some of you are just like that. Oh, come on, you know I'm telling you the truth. How about foolish thoughts? Proverbs 24, 9 gives us an indication of what that leads to. Sin. Romans 14, 23. Unbelief. Greatest, I think, of all is not believing the Word of God or the truth of God's Word. James 4, 17 we know this one already. For him to know good and to do it not to him, it is sin. Lack of opportunity or missing the opportunity, neglecting it. First John chapter 3, verse 4 talks about transgression of the law. And it's not talking so much of the temple law as much as the civil law. I will confess. 
I have broke the law this week by speeding. I mean, that's true. I didn't get caught. Thank the Lord. <laughs> but I, I have I have a heavy foot. You and John. <laughs> and you know, but but the point I'm trying to say is that's a civil law, and we think nothing of it, but we break it every day. Yeah. And there's not one person here who probably doesn't do something like that. You know, we take it all for granted. We take it well as long as I don't get caught. And we, we, we figured it out that, man, we got at least a 10 mile over the speed limit grace period. <laughs> Unless you're in a double fine zone, then it's only three miles over. I um, I had a friend or an individual that's, and we were talking, he said, I haven't had a ticket for 10 years, but I got one two weeks ago. I was only three miles over the speed limit. Wow. You know, the Tropping of the light came on and he was pulled. But we all transgress the law. Yes. And if we were to take it to the religious aspect of it, for one to transgress at any one part of the law, we're guilty of the whole yeah. thing. That's right. If we take the Ten Commandments by themselves, let's just leave out the Mosaic Law for a moment. If we take the Ten Commandments by themselves. How many of those commandments have been violated mm -hmm. by each one of us at one point or another? Does kind of help us sit down a little bit, doesn't it? And we believe that the, the Ten Commandments to be foundational for our belief system and for our relationship and our right living for God. But yet we take them so much for granted and we violate them. Well, that's Old Testament. Well, God's Old Testament too, but we still call on Him. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jesus is revealed in Genesis 3.15 as being our Redeemer, bruising the head of the serpent, being our liberator. He's revealed in, through the prophetic word to be our Redeemer. Jesus is, and yet... It's, that's Old Testament. So do we leave out the Old Testament? No. We walk? no, we don't. So everything that's in the Bible from front to end applies to each one of us. No exceptions. No exceptions. It applies. And if we were to look at 1 John 5, 17, it talks about all unrighteousness as being sin. So anything that is contrary to righteous living is a sin. Amen. All unrighteousness is sin. So you've got to determine right now what you feel is righteous and unrighteous. Not based on what you think. But what does this word say? Yeah, that's right. That's right. And that's your guideline. That's your standard. That's it right there. And if God's word says that's unrighteous, you better quit doing what you're doing. And if it says righteous, you better start doing what it says to do. It's just, you know, it's just putting it to practice. You know, we're, we're, we're together in this. We've got to practice this lifestyle. We've got to put it to, in our life. It's not just on the, the time we gather. It's an everyday occurrence. Go back over to James real quickly and we'll close with just a few verses here. James chapter 2. Chap, uh, James chapter 2. This is what it says. Speak to those... This is verse 12 and 13. So speak and do as those who, have, who will judge, who will be judged by the law of liberty. The law of liberty is whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And if God has forgiven you, so you are to forgive one another. As Christ loved the church, so you're to love one another. Talking about us, the body. I'm not talking about the unbeliever. I'm talking about the believer. As Christ loved us, so we are to love one another. As Christ forgave us, so we're to forgive one another. And show mercy. Verse 13. For judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. But mercy triumphs over all judgment. 
Matthew 5, 7 says this, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Therefore, in Luke chapter 6, verse 36, Therefore, be merciful, just as your Father, talking of God, is merciful. It's mercy that covered me when I came to the cross. I was guilty. I was sinful. I deserved the punishment of my sin. But God revealed his love for me and I accepted his offer of salvation redemption I wanted to be free from my sin I wanted to be free from the guilt of it and God said the only way you can be free is to acknowledge me as your savior and lord and I said yes to the invitation and then his mercy covered me his mercy filled me now every day I walk in grace not because of what I've done, because of what He has done. Because there's no way I can be perfect. But in Him, I am made complete. So I ask for mercy every day. Every day, God, let me be your servant. Every day, let me be faithful to your word. Help me to do that, which is right. Because I want God's mercy to be upon me. I, I don't want to be considered a judge because I don't like what it says here in, John, in Matthew 7 for with the same judgment you give out you'll be judged right. but I do want to be able to encourage rebuke, exhort the body of Christ to do what's right and be faithful to God no judgment there because I want the same thing for me. You know, you should be able to tell me, hey, hey, Tom, do what's right. You know, Tom needs a little knock on the head once in a while, too. <laughs> we all do. We all do. So let's show mercy to one another. Let's have love and compassion for one another. And for those who are outside the body of Christ in the days to come, Let's be compassionate enough to be able to share the gospel to them. Give them an opportunity to receive Christ. Because without Christ, there is no eternity in heaven for them. Right. Remember the heartbeat of God. He is not willing that anyone should perish, but all come to repentance. They will never hear unless a preacher is sent. That preacher, that witness is you and me. So let's ask God to help us. Can we stand to our feet, please? Father, we thank you for the promise of your word that you love us as a body. Lord, we're so sometimes caught up in the activities and functions and ourselves that we forget there are other people that are in this body that need to be encouraged and loved on and forgiven. So Lord, I pray that today you will touch our lives in order to touch people inside this church congregation that they can be loved and accepted and encouraged by your word and by your people in this body. So Lord, we thank you for what you're showing to us, what you're revealing to us. Thank you for enabling us to grow up a little bit today in Jesus' name. Close to thee, close to thee, close to thee. today, Lord Jesus. I want to draw close to you today. I want to be that vessel that you call honorable. But we want to draw close to you, Jesus. You're so good to us, Lord, and we're so thankful. Our life and breath is in you. Our desires are in you, Lord. 
Our abilities are in you. Our confidence is in you today. We have nothing to boast about. We have nothing to brag on but you, Lord Jesus. Because you're everything to us. You're everything to us. Lord, we thank you. And we praise you. That your mercy endures forever. That your grace, your mercy toward us is great. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Church, as Esther said to Mordecai, or as Mordecai said to Esther, for such a time as this, you are, you are. Take the opportunities in the days ahead. This is it. Time is coming to where no man can work. So we need to be attentive and alert to what God's word says. So your commission today is to go and to share the power and love of Jesus Christ. Be faithful to his word. He's your only foundation. So don't, don't, don't leave him. Keep standing. Regardless of what people say. God bless you. Shake hands, greet each other in Christ. Hopefully we'll see you tonight at the fellowship.